Hey guys, I'm Corey Hilton and I'm currently sitting underneath my bed. Now in this DIY cargo trailer camper that uh, my wife and I have built over the last couple months, we knew we really wanted some sort of bed system that would allow us to utilize all of the space underneath the bed, which is where I'm sitting right now, right? We have this little dinette area underneath the bed and we're not using the bed, the bed is pushed up out of the way. Now there's lots of different ways that you can achieve this result, right? We looked at at several different um, types of motorized systems with uh, jacks and hydraulic lifts and all kinds of things. And uh, we found this really cool product called a Happy Jack that just happens to be very unhappily priced, right? It's a really expensive product that folks put in vans and that sort of thing. And it's really, really expensive and kind of bulky and ugly and that sort of thing. So they really wanted some sort of alternative, right? Which is what we figured out, all right? So in this video, we're gonna talk all about the uh, bed system that we created. Now, I think out of all the research that I did for building this camper, I probably put more hours, literally hours of research into trying to figure out the best sort of system for a bed, right? Um, and like I said, we looked at all kinds of different options. There are some really great videos on YouTube that really showcase all kinds of really cool bed designs, right? I'll be sure to link some of those in the description below if you're interested in other types of bed designs. But what we eventually settled on was a system that utilizes pushing the bed straight up out of the way of the seating area with the use of linear actuators at all four corners of the bed. Now a linear actuator is a type of motor that pushes a rod straight up. Um, now there's lots of different uses for these types of motors and I looked at a ton of different types of motors and eventually settled on the linear actuator type of product because they are able to lift a lot of weights um, they can go straight up and down and you can buy them in a huge variety of sizes and they're not too terribly expensive. They're pretty expensive, but not too terribly expensive. Now while building this bed, I had to solve a ton of problems, all right? There's lots of things you have to take into account when you're working in a cargo trailer, right? You have the square shape, you have what's holding the weight of the bed, what's gonna lift the bed up and down. There's lots of different problems to address and I literally spent hours working on this, designing things, drawing things out, and I eventually settled on this design, which we are incredibly satisfied with. Now, I hope you're ready to see the final product because this thing turned out really nicely. I don't think I could be more satisfied with the way the whole system ended up coming together and the amount of space that we get from using this type of bed. So here is the completed product. So here we have the bed in the upward position. We have all of this extra seating room and space underneath. Now we have all the lights on different switches. We can turn the upper lights on or off and we can turn the lower lights on or off just like that. And all of these have dimmer switches as well. So if the bed is in the down position, you have lights. If the bed is in the up position, you have lights. And man, I just love the amount of space that this gave us down here. Now to make the bed system go up and down, it's literally just a matter of flipping a switch. So right here, it's in the up position. If I wanna take it to the down position, we have the switch right here and you just press it and it starts going down. Now this is not like an instant system, right? It takes about it takes about a minute and 45 seconds to go all the way up or all the way down, which is no big deal. It really doesn't take long. We have found ourselves just kind of you flip it when you want to move it and you just watch it kind of in your peripheral vision as it's going and you stop it before it gets all the way to the ceiling or all the way gets down and that sort of thing and uh, it doesn't really interfere with our ability to use it at all. Now one small thing we need to deal with, with these were these lights that are underneath the bed um, that light up the seating area right and you can see that black sort of cable thing in the back corner back there and that's actually just the wiring is just covered up and it just hangs loose it's sort of attached up inside the bed inside of there and you can actually see a little bit of the wire that's sort of uncovered from the um, like coating that we have on there. And that allows the wiring just to sort of stay in place and out of the way when you're lifting the bed up and down. So it just kind of folds up on itself. Like it doesn't retract or do anything fancy. It just kind of sits there. When the bed goes up and down, um, you know, it just kind of pushes itself out of the way. Now here is the bed in the lowered position. So here you can kind of see some of our wiring and exactly what it looks like underneath the mattress. So 
we just had some of these little planks that we got from Ikea. It came in a big kit and we ended up cutting them and kind of reshaping them and that sort of thing. And we just attached them to this wood. You can see the entire thing is made out of aluminum extrusion. And then I have these small pieces of wood that are like connected to the aluminum extrusion. And they're just like screwed into the side of the metal. You actually see the screw pop sticking through here. Um, the big heavy duty metal screw and both the um, slats on top that the mattress sits out on and the uh, pieces underneath the, the what you see as the ceiling when you're sitting in the seated area all those are just nail gunned into the wood that's attached there so all the weight is really supported by the metal other things that you can kind of see when the bed is in the down position and the mattress is not on here, you can see the wiring. You know, we just have basically the wiring all kind of taped nice and snug into place. Like there's the uh, the backside of the puck light and how it's kind of sitting in there and there's our, our wire is running. And the wire actually runs all the way and it goes into that back corner and then drops down. Um, so we can get the electricity up here to this thing. And we just kind of left it raw. We didn't want to cover it up in case we ever needed to reaccess the wire or anything like that. Um, or needed to work on it or that sort of thing. Um, and you know, the mattress is on here. You don't see any of this anyway, right? So um, once it's covered up, um, it's really no risk. And you know, it's the mattress sticks out far enough that you don't really have to like worry about like your foot slipping in here or anything like that. Like it kind of comes all the way to the edge of the metal here. Um, so that's not really a problem. Also, like you saw in the build video, we have these rails that um, the, the bed actually rides on. You can see that sort of trolley, that's what it's called, this little trolley thing in there. It's got four wheels on, it rides up and down in there. And this is, it's kind of dirty in there. You can't really see it because it's greased. Uh, we do keep greasing kind of inside of there, so it makes it move up and down very nicely and it doesn't get caught or anything like that. And uh, it rides really smoothly. It doesn't have any trouble going up and down. It doesn't stick, it doesn't jolt or anything like that. And the rails actually support a lot of the weight. All right, now that I've kind of shown you the operation and kind of the final product, let me show you sort of the brains of this operation. Okay, this is the control box and one of the actuators, at least the base here. So this is the control box right here. Um, there are four different actuators that go in and they each have one of these little green plugs. So there's one, two, three, and four. Uh, there are two more little plugs right here. One of these essentially goes to the switch. The other essentially goes to the power. It's a little more complicated than that, but that's the simple version. And this control box syncs up each of these actuators. So this is the motor itself. It's kind of hard to see. I'll show you a zoomed out view of what an actuator looks like here in just a second. Um, but essentially this tiny little motor right here makes a bar that's inside of this go upwards, right? And this control box, which is made by Fergelli, I think is how you say it, Automations, Fergelli Automations, it's a US based company and uh, they make this cool control box and these actuators and their customer support is very good. I had to use them on a couple occasions and I will link to all of these parts in the description exactly what you need to do it. But the special thing about this control box is it makes all four of these actuators sync up because uh, if you just use any old actuators when you flip the switch, they all go up at slightly different speeds and it will not go up in a straight and level fashion. And this control board links up all the actuators and makes them all go up uh, at the same time. Uh, here is a full view of the actuator. So there's the base down there and you can see it goes all the way up and it, then it has the extension part. That's what that silver bit is right there. It has that extension part that goes up and connects to the bed through that little L bracket down there. Now I painted it, I just painted over it with the paint sprayer and that's no big deal, but you can at least see the actuator and what it looks like in its entirety. So there are four actuators. There's one right here. There's one right to the left of the battery that is hidden underneath the cabinet and comes up out of the top of the cabinet there. And there's one at each of the other two corners behind me. And these are all hidden nicely and they all connect to the bed in the same way with that little bracket. The last little technical aspect of this is this rocker switch. Now you wanna get one that locks into place meaning that when you push the button down or up, it will stay in that position until you turn it off. They also make rocker switches that you have to hold down to get to go up or down. You don't really wanna use one of those because this thing takes about two minutes to come up and down. So you want one that you can just press and kind of leave it until it's ready to go.
Two other small things that I did, I did put a bolt at the bottom to keep the trolley from going too far down. They ended up not being much of a risk because the most lowered position is actually a little bit higher than this, but I guess that was just a bit of an extra safety feature. And then secondly, up here at the top, there is a hole that goes through the rails, uh, and that is so for a little pin to go in when the bed is in the most upward position. Um, these actuators are very strong, but the bed is pretty heavy, and I wouldn't want that falling on my head. So if we're gonna have it up for the whole day, we'll throw a pin in that just as an extra safety feature. And you can see that um, I do have some small screws that are kind of all going up inside this, um, this channel, but there are some very large bolts. You can't really see it, but there are large bolts in the top, the middle, and the bottom of this rail. Now the question is, how much did I spend on this entire bed project? And the short answer is about $1,200. Now, $800 of that is basically from the actuators and the micro board and all that stuff that controls the bed going up and down, right? The electronics of this is really about $800 worth. And I wanted to show you kind of what I use. So here we are on the Fregelli Automations website. Um, it's fregelliauto.com. This is a U.S. company. It's really cool. And it's fun to just browse around on the site because they've got a really fun site that's got lots of different robotics and switches and motors. And I stumbled on this accidentally, so um, it's pretty cool. But the thing you're going to need is under microcontrollers, you're going to need the controller and you're going to need the um, the actuators, right? So if you go under microcontrollers, you need this synchronous control board for feedback actuators. You're going to click that one. And ours has four. Of note, I did try to build this with two originally, and it wouldn't work. So I had to use four actuators, one in each corner. Um, it didn't ride up the rails properly and got stuck. So you're going to want the four one, which looks like this, right? And the fastest way to figure out which actuators to use, because there's lots of different actuators on this website, is just to go down to the bottom. You can see the frequently bought together. And these are the optical feedback linear actuators. And this is what they look like. I got the 30-inch ones, and I got the 200-pound ones. And there's lots of specs and everything about them on the site that you can see. I also got some of these little mounting brackets that go at the bottom, the rocker switch, the mounting bracket. I got all this stuff from this website, which was really cool. And they're about 160 bucks a piece, so they're pretty expensive. Um, but, you know, um, it's a cool system, and I believe in the product, and I think it's going to hold really well, and they're super strong, and, you know, U.S.-based companies. So check it out for Gelly Automations. Um, you can build this really cool kind of happy jack alternative for, um, you know, about $1,200. All right, that is pretty much it. I just wanted to kind of show off this cool bed system that I built. We are super pleased with sort of the final outcome. All this extra space underneath here has been really awesome. And uh, it's worked really, really well. I mean, it doesn't hardly use any power. Um, these actuators are really energy efficient. And uh, we've only had kind of one major breakdown in the early days that was just kind of troubleshooting and figuring it all out. Um, like I said, I'll link all the products in the description if you're interested in building something like this. Now, this is really just the first of a two-part kind of series all about this bed system. The second is going to be kind of the build video to walk you through. I wanted to do kind of a uh, showcase of the final product before I showed the build video. Um, so if you guys are interested, be sure to check that out. Um, I'm also going to be showing lots of cool parts about this over on the website once I get that kind of put together over at DIYCargoTrailer.com. If you are interested, I'm working on putting together a bit of a course over there hoping to launch it in late spring early summer 2022 about how to build a trailer kind of like this um, kind of from scratch right so we're putting together a little course that we're probably going to sell over on the site so if you have some interest go over to the website diycargotrailer.com drop your email and uh, we'll keep you in a loop on uh, how that course is coming together um, i think that's gonna do it guys i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you like this this really cool bed that i built um, i'm really proud of it it's probably one of the most uh, advanced things that I did on this trailer, uh, especially that I had kind of invented it myself and I haven't seen anything else like this out there. So um, if you like it, be sure to drop a comment. I'm happy to help wherever you guys need and uh, I'll see you next time.